In today's video, I'll be showing guys what the dot product is in Roblox Studio and its use cases. Before we actually go into the tutorial, um, you need to know about look vectors on parts in Roblox Studio. So what I ha have here is these front indicators and these parts, as we can see, are both facing in the same direction. Um, so the side of the part that is facing in the front direction here, that is basically the look vector. This represents the look vector. So you have to know what front or look vectors and all that are before we actually get into dot product. Okay, so we have this coordinate plane and we can use this coordinate plane to represent the dot product. So I'm gonna mark this um, one, this will be zero and this will be negative one. So how we can use this is two vectors. If they are facing in the same direction, the dot product of these two vectors would be one. If they were facing in opposite directions, the dot product would be negative one. And if they were at a right angle to each other, both of these vectors, the dot product would be zero. And we can have everything in between like the dot product, oh man. Um, this can be represented 0.5, and this can be represented as negative 0.5. So the dot product returns us a number to see how close two vectors are um, of each other of facing in the same direction. And we can use this in Roblox Studio. So in Service Script Service, I'm going to insert a script, and we need to get these two parts, by the way. Uh, I have this green part called just part and this red part called part two. Make sure that they are both anchored. And we need to get the variables and look vectors of both of these parts. So let's get that now. So we need to get the parts. Whoa. Parts. Game.workspace.part. We also need to get the um, look vector. So part look vector to go to parts.cframe.lookVector and then just copy these and then you can put a space here just to make it look better part 2 uh, again our space dot part 2 and part 2 look vector part 2 and we have I'm, I'm just going to combine these just so it looks better all right so we can then get the dot product. Um, so we can capture this in a variable dot product, and that will be equal to part look vector, and we will get the dot. So we can say colon dot, and there is our dot product right there. Um, and we put that in, and then we put in our parts, our other parts look vector, which is part two look vector. Now we are going to print it. Oh, uh, the dot product, sorry, <laughs> the dot product, and we can see what this uh, gives us. Now, it should give us one because both of these parts are facing in the same direction, as we can see here. Open up your output and run the game, and it gives us one. Same thing, if we have it turned at a 90 degree angle, it would be zero, and then if they were facing opposite directions, it would give us negative one dot product can be really cool but it may not be cool if you guys don't know what the use cases are for it and some use cases is um if you're fighting an npc but you can only fight that npc if your character is facing it and another a monster you know like i say in a horror game a monster teleports behind you but it can only teleport behind you if you are not looking at it and stuff of that nature. And I'm gonna give you guys an example. I'm going to insert a rig and we can tell if the rig is facing us or not. So let's get into that example. So I'm gonna leave those parts there and I'm gonna just go over here for a little bit. Don't delete the script, we'll use it uh, in just a second. So we're gonna go to avatar up here and we're gonna go to rig builder and I'm gonna insert a block rig and we now have this block rig. Now I'm gonna make it so when you touch this rig, it'll give us the dot product, but I don't really want to loop through every part in here. So I'm going to create something called a hitbox. I'll make sure it's facing the same way. I'm gonna create a hitbox that surrounds the entire player 
entire character here. So I'm going to set the transparency to 1 and set the can collide to false. I'm also going to rename it to hitbox. And with this, I'm also going to anchor and I'm going to surround the character. And I'll come back to you guys when I finish this. Okay, so here's my hitbox. If we were to set it to the transparency 0.3, I made it so it kind of surrounds the character so you don't have to get up and personal uh, to actually activate it. Set this back to 1 and we can begin programming it. Head back to your script, get rid of everything that we have here, and we can get our variable. So I'm going to say rig, game.workspace.rig, uh, and then... I am going to get the humanoid root part. So rig humanoid root part will be go to rig dot. Uh, wait, let me. S yeah, rig. I'm just going to say find first child humanoid root part, just like that. And then, of course, we need our hitbox game dot workspace dot hitbox. And we have all of our variables. I'm also going to get a debounce so that it doesn't fire a thousand times a second because when you touch something it activates it for every body part that touches it and that's a lot of body parts at once sometimes so we're going to use a debounce so that it doesn't fire uh, all those times and I'm just going to create a local function uh, called hitbox touched with the hits and then down here I'm going to say hitbox dot touch connect hitbox touched and then when we touch it we need to get the player from that so player is equal to game dot players get player from character hit dot uh, parents and then we need to get our players humanoid root part so humanoid root part will be equal to our players character and the humanoid root part in that character so you know root part we can then finally get our dot product so dot product is equal to humanoid um, dot c frame whoops c frame dot look vector dot colon dot and we can put in our rig humanoid root part dot c frame oh man that's not pretty <laughs> uh humanoid root part c frame uh, dot look vector there we go now that we have our dot product we need to see if our character is facing in the same direction as the rig to check this we can say if dot product is greater than or equal to negative one and dot product is less than zero then print player uh, player is facing rig and I'm also going to put out here dot product so we get it else copy this and player is not facing rig and we still get the dot product uh, there excuse me excuse me guys but I actually forgot to add something here and when I have the player I need to actually say if player and not debounce then debounce equals to true and I'm just going to toss this end down here and get rid of it here and move it over and I think I just need to move all my code over like this I don't think it's that big of a problem or actually I'm gonna leave it how it is um, so I think this will be fine I don't think I really needed to do that um, wait hold on let me fix this real quick alright so I fixed the the issue there with the spacing and whatnot but now we have this and we can then actually use our debounce because we weren't before task dot wait I'm gonna say one second debounce is equal to false so this will only run every one second if we are touching it and another thing I forgot to do here is also put the else here um, and stuff because I got rid of some of the code to reorganize it and I forgot to add some of the stuff back so uh, here I'm gonna say dot product and then over here I'm going to copy this print statement again and say player is not facing rig and we shall be good to go spacing's all good and this is how it should be open up your output i made it um, blown up so you can see it head into your game and we're going to go to the rig 
and when I'm perfectly facing him or just facing him, it says player is facing the rig, but when I stepped away, it says player is not facing rig. All right, so I'm going to go up again. Oh, I did not anchor him, but that should be all fine. And I'm going to have uh, myself at a right angle. And when I do this, it says still player is not facing rig, so you actually have to be facing him. And obviously, if you go at him backwards, still not going to be facing him. And it works all perfectly fine. It just it runs when you touch him and you are actually facing him. And yeah, guys, that was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.